Hello, plant people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about Bokashi composting. And my setup that I have, I have two different options for Bokashi composting. One I like a little bit more than the other, what I added, what it actually looks like, and just the entire process from the tea and all that other stuff in between. So let's just jump straight into it. So if you are not familiar with Bokashi composting, it is the process of composting food waste, including bones, meats, and even sometimes animal feces, which I have not tried, but apparently it's possible, all in an anaerobic environment. Now, I will warn you, this is not a normal kind of composting where you get the black gold at the end. The end product looks almost identical to the product you initially put into the compost, meaning your corn will still look like corn, your paper towel rolls will still look like paper towel rolls. However, they are inoculated with a pretty pr impressive dosage of anaerobic microbes and a little bit of fungi. Now, if it's green fungi or black fungi, it means your container was not airtight and it's not perfect. However, you can still obviously trench it or put it into a pile in the ground. But nonetheless, it's, you're aiming for no fungi growth or just white fungi growth whenever possible. So let's just jump straight into what my setup looks like. I have a two bucket system and this is what works best for me. I tried a one bucket system with a Vericast or ver Vermicompost um, set up in the basement thinking that my two week wait on the Bokashi compost would be a small enough window that I could just feed my worms everything I had. However, anyone who has worm setups, they're kind of slow, <laughs> especially if you just have one tub and actually eating the byproduct or the food that you give them. So I had to upgrade to a two bucket system. Now one bucket I do like more than the other and we'll get into exactly why that is. So this is just the Home Depot five gallon pail bucket. And this is a system that I'm almost done with um, and is almost ready for its two week wait. So inside of here, I have my compost that is pretty much up to the rim. And if it wasn't up to the rim, I would have a plastic bag on top, kind of pushing or compacting this all together, or a plate of some sort, kind of compacting or pushing it all together. But what you do want is a layer um, that is stomped down and something that avoids oxygen or decreases the oxygen movement in the pile. So that's what you wanna do in that case, but mine's really, really full. So we're getting to the point where I can't really push or coat this in any way shape or form so this is kind of what the inside of this looks like my bokashi bran is just this layer up there the more you use the better but we'll get into that a little bit later and inside of there you can see paper towel onions corn chicken uh fish banana peels you name it it's full so what i like to do is put this in and then push it down as much as possible. There's eggs in here too. You can hear those crunch. After you push it down, you want to put, like I said, the a layer on top or uh, so you want to put a plastic layer on it. So what I would like to do or what I like to do is just a plastic bag, but this is getting really, really full. So I'm not going to be able to put anything on top. And then after you're done, you're waiting for your two week wait. You're actually just gonna pop this on top. And if it's longer than two weeks, it's fine, um, but it has to be minimum of two weeks. And you actually want this to be fully down, but I don't wanna break my desk. So I'm gonna wait till I put this in the ground and you want to have it fully sealed. And then you leave it. Now, the entire time while you're both filling the actual bin, and while you're waiting for the two weeks, you want to make sure you're draining your compost. So. At the bottom here, there is a valve. I'm not gonna turn the valve right now, um, but there is some liquid that comes out. This liquid can be mixed with water to water your plants. Now, I personally wouldn't use it for house plants, although you can. It's just going to decompose your peat moss and stuff a little bit quicker than what it normally would. And it's also 
slightly acidic, even with when it's diluted with water. And so my concern would be acidifying an already acidic soilless medium. So I don't use it for my house plants. However, you can use it outdoors and it is incredibly beneficial to use outdoors on actual compost. So if you have a compost bin outdoors and you let this drain directly onto that, or if you just water your plants with it that have organic compost or manures mixed into the soil, that's gonna help with the decomposition of it. Or if you watch the trench compost video and you took up trench composting, decided you didn't like it and wanna try Bokashi composting, then you can actually water the trench with this as well. And if that is the case, I won't bother dilute, diluting it. As long as you're not putting it directly on or near plants, you can just put this in the soil, regular old fashion. So this, after it's done after two weeks, will look identical to what it looks like right now, as you see it. And you are going to dig a hole or a trench, put this compost in and cover it up. It decomposes quickly because this entire thing has been sitting and allowing microbes to kind of fester for at least two weeks. So keep that in mind. But this valve at the bottom of this one that I have is actually a um, water heater valve. So I used literally a water heater valve with a washer on two sides, like the big metal washers here. And that is how I put this one in. I don't love this tap compared to my other tap. However, it is slightly smaller and I believe it was a little less money. So I'll put down uh, a link down below for this tap, but this is a tap made for a water heater specifically. So this is my Cadillac system. This is the one that I like the most hands down. And I'm actually gonna get another one of these gamma lids as well. And so with this gamma lid, it actually allows you to turn on the lid and turn it off again. So this seal that's on there is an airtight seal. And this is kind of what preppers actually use for food, long-term food storage. You would use a gamma lid and it blocks out oxygen. So this can be tightened on to the, the bucket and left for two weeks like this. I don't like that one. I'm going to have to get a hammer and I'm going to have to hammer down all the corners to make sure it sticks, stays down and is airtight. This one I don't have to do that with. It literally is just a spin top. So as I'm filling it, the only thing I need to do is still do the stamp down process and put the plastic bag on top. But otherwise, this is like, this is the Cadillac right here. The gamma lid is the Cadillac system. So this one's empty right now. I guess it's not totally empty. There's some stuff in there, but it's, it's mostly empty. Um, and so I have not yet filled this guy because we actually don't produce a lot of compost, oddly enough. I actually think it's because the reason why my house doesn't produce a lot of compost is because I can a lot of our vegetables and fruits actually during like the fall season. So all the produce that we eat is either frozen or canned. So it's already processed. So the only real compost we make is like eggs and bananas <laughs> and uh, paper towel. Pretty much that's it. So just a fun fact there, but this is what that looks like. And like I said, the gamma lid is my favorite. Now this is a way nicer to turn valve. I will say that it is a lot easier to turn, a lot easier to seal. And this is actually a barrel valve. So this is designed for an actual barrel. And whenever you're installing this, whether you're installing the water heater version or this version, you wanna get it as close as possible to the actual bottom. And the bit that I used to make this was a stepper bit. So this system is my fave. And I like that it points downwards. That one kind of points outwards. So it's not a super clean drip off of the liquid, but you do wanna make sure you're deliquifying it once every two, three days, or if possible, if you have it outdoors, just literally open the valve and let it be able to drain on its own into some sort of a cup. That's my two bin system. And like I said, between my Veracast compost and this system here, that is my winter composting regimen because I don't have leaves. 
I don't have grass clippings and I don't have like garden cuttings or anything like that. So I don't have a ton of compost to deal with. So between the two bins and my Veracast, it's good to go. Now in the winter after the two week wait, the, the compost once it's ready, I don't obviously dig it into the ground because the ground is frozen. So I rubber made bin it. So I have a big black rubber made sitting on my deck and I literally just dump the compost in and seal it up and it's frozen in there until I'm ready to trench it or until I'm ready to put it in an actual compost. So if you put it in an actual compost that has lots of aeration and lots of heat, it actually decomposes even quicker than if you actually trench it or dig it into a hole. Now, next on the list is the actual Bokashi bran that you can add. So this is a Canadian company. They also make another one meant for composting pet waste. Yes, no, I have not tried it. Yes, it is a thing. Please let me know in the comments if you have. I would actually be very interested in whether or not you're composting your, your animal waste. But anyways, nonetheless, I guess it's not that gross because I know there's composting toilets out there. I just, my head just can't wrap around eating, putting, planting my animal. No, just, I can't, I can't do it. So anyways, <laughs> this is the product that I like to use. It's uh, My Good Green, it's a Canadian company. And it's a really, really fine Bokashi brand um, and it's easy. So this is really quick and easy if you have it pre-made. Your other options is making your own. Um, now you can get the EM1 liquid. It's like a black liquid. And then you inoculate your own animal feed. Um, you can use pet bedding. So whether that be like uh, paper, shredded paper or pine shavings, whatever the case is, or you can get like the actual brand brand, whatever you choose you can do your own inoculation or you can literally start from scratch and then make it up. So I've done it from scratch and um, made my own. I do find you need to use a little bit more of it. I'm assuming it's because if you make it from scratch, it doesn't have the proprietary blend of microbes um, in the actual liquid. So I mean, may or may or may not hamper the actual decomposition process, but I do find you use a little bit less when you get like a branded product. However, there is, the, you can get the liquid and do your own inoculation process. And I have heard that that's actually pretty legit as well. Now, with that being said, if you choose to make this at home, and I can do an entire video on how to do this on your own, it, you you can make it for cheap cheap like you can get a whole thing from PV Mart of animal feed for like fifteen dollars and it's like sixteen kilograms or something crazy like that. That's gonna be enough Bokashi bran for you, all your neighbors for like a year. It's a ton of Bokashi bran, so do keep that in mind. And you can just use this in regular compost too. Fun fact, it's just gonna help with the decomposition process. So. That is what my system looks like. That is what my bins look like. I've had lots of requests to see these and personally, the gamma lid with a more slanted pipe on it is the better choice for me. The first bit I made, not as ideal. And like I said, the actual Bohashi brand you go with, the name brand stuff you don't tend to need as much of, but nonetheless, it works. It decomposes quickly. I'm not worried about the acidity and I'm not worried about the decomposing in the soil. It's actually pretty quick. It's about three weeks to a month. Straight trench composting it takes a little bit more time, but this is actually pretty quick. People are concerned about adding anaerobic microbes to their soil when they use the Bokashi compost because it is an anaerobic environment of microbes. Don't stress about that. It's not a big deal. Your plants will be just fine. Your soil has anaerobic areas in it naturally. But like I said, I would not use it in houseplants. I just wouldn't use the liquid portion of that with houseplants. This is an outdoor uh, compost activity only. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. And let me know in the comments down below if you Bokashi compost and any tips and tricks you may have because I constantly get comments about how the comment section is nearly as helpful, if not more helpful in some cases, as the actual video. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Talk to you guys later. Bye.